Hello, my friends. May the Spirit of God Most High come to enlighten your understanding. Let there be light in your mind, in your intellect, in your reasoning. Let there be light, the light of the Holy Spirit, so that you may understand His Word and apply it to your life straight away. Very well. See here. Look at what Jesus says. You who are watching me right now, and you say, Wow, I've already done everything. I see many times people leaving comments on, on Instagram and on Telegram as well. People saying like this, Bishop, I am a lost coin inside of the house. I am a, I'm like this lost coin. I've been in church for many years, the universal church, but my life got better. And I don't believe that God just wants to improve our lives, but He wants to give us a new one. He does not improve anybody's life. He gives a new one. Either He gives a new life or He doesn't. Do not be deceived with half-improved life, with more or less new life. If you are not flowing rivers, if there is no rivers of living water flowing from within you, it's because you can be sure you haven't yet entered the kingdom of God. Or better yet, you are not yet born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. Why? The question is, why? Why am I not born of God yet? Pay attention, please. Very close attention. Because these words of the Lord Jesus will clarify to you definitely the reason why your life is still like a lost coin. Jesus said like this, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. The lost coin is lost, but the kingdom of God is at hand. It's near to this lost coin. The kingdom of God is near you, my friend. You who have already done many things, including the fast of Daniel, but still you haven't entered the kingdom of God. Why? Why? This is the question. Why? Then he says like this. Let me read the text again. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. Firstly, let's talk about repentance. Repentance, my dear friend, has nothing to do with feelings. For example, a remorse. At first glance, remorse seems like repentance, but it's not. It's pointless for you to cry over the spilled milk because you've done wrong if you continue doing it. In the following day, you are going to do it again, so it's pointless. Remorse is not repentance and vice versa. Repentance is an attitude of sacrifice. <laughs> it's an attitude of sacrifice. It's a determination of sacrifice. And I can even remember right now the testimony that we posted last week here of a gentleman who, in jail, he had been sentenced to many years in prison and he was lost, literally lost. His case was lost, but inside of the prison, amongst an other prisoners, when all of them were asleep in the middle of the night, 
he, he said, my God, if you exist, take me out of here. If you take me out of here, I will serve you for the rest of my life. I will not ever again do what I did. I will follow you and serve you for the rest of my life. A very simple prayer, but very powerful. So he determined, he determined inside of the prison. He said a prayer, there was no altar, there was no music, there was no singing, there was no direction on how to pray, anything. What there was, was the following. If you exist, take me out of the situation. Because if you take me out of here, I will serve you for the rest of my life, which means I won't do that anymore. He was a criminal, he had killed, he had stolen, he had raped people, he had made people's lives a living hell. But in the moment of sincerity and repentance, God heard his prayer because he determined, he decided. And what has been happening? Many people go to church, they come close to the altar, they even go up to the altar, but they do not repent. They place their offerings, their physical offerings on the altar, but they do not place all of their soul on the altar. And that is the greatest mistake many people have been making. They think that if they give their offerings, then God will hear them and change their life. But it's not how it works. The offering is the soul. The offering represents the soul of the person. They have to place their soul. They have to want to change. They have to want. They have to, to really, really want to give up on what is wrong. Repentance is attitude of faith. You take that action of faith. That's what's called supernatural faith. A faith that changes a person's life and transforms that person's life. And indeed, that man, what happened to him? He, he was delivered. He was baptized in the Holy Spirit inside of the prison. And afterwards, he didn't want to leave prison anymore. Do you know why? Because he wanted to serve Jesus inside of the prison. He wanted to preach Jesus and speak of Jesus to his colleagues in jail. Because it's better to speak of Jesus there inside than to be on the outside. So, my friend, repentance is the basic, it's the beginning in order for you to enter the kingdom of God. Jesus said, repent, and repentance is not a gift of God. I already spoke, oh, a re repentance is a gift of God. No, what Jesus is saying is, repent, it's us, we have to repent. If we repent, we have to take action. It's not God that will give that gift to us. No, obviously He convinces us of sin. He convinces people from their sin. And they know that they are in sin. But they don't repent, which means they do not abandon their sin. They do not abandon what is wrong. And so how can they enter the kingdom of God this way? Do you think that a person who has not repented can be born again? Of course not. They will not be born again. They have to repent. That's what the Holy Spirit did with me. He convinced me of my sins because I was young. I was a youth, 19 years old. I had many sins, but in my own eyes, it wasn't that ugly. Oh. It's not that relevant after all, but it was. Small sins or big sins, they are the same. They lead people to hell in the same way. Small sin, not even the slightest sin is allowed. 
you have to be holy, free, pure from sin. You have to place all of your life on the altar, which means all of your soul, your desires, your lusts, your, let's say, your principles, your opinions, that's it. You have to repent. If there is no such thing, because the Holy Spirit convinces and you know that you are doing wrong, you know that you are a sinner, the only thing lacking is for you to repent. The Holy Spirit gives what? Knowledge. He reveals that we are in sin. He convinces us from sin. But repentance comes from each and every one of us. So once I was convinced of my sin, then yes, I cried out to him, I asked for his mercy, then the Holy Spirit pointed me towards the only one who can save, who could save my soul, who was Jesus. And this is what has to happen to you, to all of us. Every human being is like that. This is a rule. First, repentance. The kingdom of God is at hand. He's near you. I'm sure of that. Now, it's not enough for it to be near you. You have to enter, to enter his kingdom. And to enter it, you have to repent. And when you repent, meaning when you are convinced that you are a sin and ask God for forgiveness and say, God, I will never do it again. Then, yes, yes, there was repentance. And then the second thing after repentance, the baptism in water. He says like this, repent and believe in the gospel. To believe in the gospel means to act, to obey, to exercise, to practice the gospel, which is the good news of God's kingdom. He said, believe in the gospel. What did Jesus say for us to do later on? That we have to be baptized in water, meaning when the person believes in the gospel, they repent and they are baptized in water, the water baptism buries, buries the past of that person. And when they get out of the water, is to live in newness of life. This has to happen to you. So firstly, you have to repent. This is something personal. No one can repent on your behalf. You have to do it yourself. God won't do it for you. God convinces you of your sin. The Holy Spirit convinces of this, our sins. But we have to repent. The person has to repent from their sins. Secondly, to be baptized in water. And then thirdly, then comes the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is the baptism. This is what has to happen. Sometimes the person says like this, Oh, Bishop, I got baptized in water three times and nothing happened. And nothing will happen because you didn't repent. First you have to repent. The water baptism is only valid after there is repentance, sincere repentance from the person. Otherwise, there will be no possibility for the person to be saved. Pay attention. The Apostle Paul, there in Hebrews, he says like this, You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, which means to sacrifice, striving against sin. This is the problem. People do not resist to their limit against sin. So, the, it has to be a hundred percent. It's all for all. It's a yes or no. It's make or break. It's not more or less. It's a hundred percent. So he says, you have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. And it's the Holy Spirit speaking. You who haven't received the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit yet, it's because you have not resisted 
sin to bloodshed, meaning you haven't gone to your limits yet. And this is the problem. I believe that this is the answer for you who are watching me right now. You who are living a life as half brick, half clay. You are sincere. You have been sincere. However, because you haven't yet repented to the point to the point of going to your limit, to the point of sacrifice the, of your blood, of your soul, of your desires, of your lust, of your personal projects, perhaps, perhaps you are that kind of person like me. I was young, 19 years old, and I would say, oh, come on, if I give my life, all of my life to Jesus, then I have so much life ahead, I'm young. I want, I want to enjoy a, a little bit of this world. And I would feed that personal desire, a personal dream to study, to get a diploma, to have a family, to make money. I, I had all these dreams inside of me. And I would let them at the bottom of my heart, down there, and then I would give the rest of my heart to God. And I stayed in the church for almost two years, stuck, stuck, until the moment that I decided to give up on my dreams, my personal projects. And yes, that's when I repented and I said, forgive me, Lord, have mercy on me. And from then on, my life changed. Everything, of course, because the Holy Spirit, for sure, He teaches us, He guides us, He inspires, He convinces us. And that's when the new life took place in me. But here is the text that you need to think about. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed. We have to resist to bloodshed. We have to go to our limit. A total sacrifice. Striving against sin. I was not striving against sin. I was striving against my will that was sinful. I was prioritizing my dreams, my personal dreams. And because of that, it wasn't possible for me to be born again. It wasn't possible for me to be or to be converted because a conversion has to be total. It's not half conversion or for the person to be half converted. There is no such thing. It's a total surrender. It's like a marriage. Nobody is half married, isn't it? Once you get married, you who are married already, you who live together with someone, you who already slept with that person, it's all for all, isn't it? You know what I'm talking about. You don't leave anything on the outside, isn't it? It's the full body, whole body there. You give all. Both have to give. Isn't it this way? Very well. Repentance is like this as well. It's all. You surrender everything, not just the body, but the body, the soul, which is the heart, your spirit, everything, you give everything up to God. And then God gives you His all, the best He has, His best, which is His Holy Spirit. And that's when you become a new person. Tomorrow we are going to speak more about this because in this fast of Daniel, we all have time, enough time to meditate, to read, to write, and take note, and so on, to do everything that is needed. And I'd like to ask a favor from you who are a part of this great army of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, and there has been fighting for those who are afflicted. I wanted to ask you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that this Sunday at 3.30 p.m. you bring at least one person, at least one, one person who is depressed, someone who 
has been experiencing a piece of hell in this world. Take them, put them in your car, make the effort, the sacrifice to bring someone who is depressed with insomnia, with anxiety, nervousness, someone who has constant headaches with suicidal thoughts, bring one of these people in a universal church of the kingdom of God this Sunday at 3.30 p.m. By the way, this Sunday, Esther and I will be celebrating our 51st wedding anniversary. And I would like to receive a gift from you, which that's, the, the, that's it, that you would bring at least one person in the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God this Sunday at 3.30 p.m., okay? We are going to have that special meeting dedicated especially to those who suffer with depression. Let's work together to make sure that our Lord is being sanctified in our lives. May God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.